Hello and welcome to my video. Um, it's the old brick guy here covering cat hair as usual. Um, I've, I've got this painting and I've had it for I don't know six seven months. I don't think it's ever going to sell and um, not that there's anything particularly wrong. Some people may say well if I painted a sky like that I'd actually be quite pleased and it's okay but I just think that um, it's a little bit boring down here and I also want to get more of a blend between the sky and the ground. I'm also going to change the, the fields quite a lot. I'm going to raise the horizon up to I suppose here somewhere it'll be somewhere in there but I want it to be difficult to tell exactly where the um, where the horizon is due to the mist and I'm going to work on the sky. Now I'm, I'm using something today that's um, something I haven't used for a long time, not since I was possibly in college, which is like a thousand years ago, um, and that's stand oil. This is stand oil. Now stand oil is quite interesting. It's very, very, um, very heavy uh, oil. You can tip it over and it, it's very slow moving. In fact, I dropped this on the floor earlier with the top off and uh, before any could come out, I was able to pick it up uh, without any any, um, any mess. So it's it's very interesting. It leaves a bit of a nice shine on your picture, um, and it also uh, tends to eliminate brush marks. You get a very smooth finish with it. So I'm going to be using this um, quite a lot of it too. And um, one brush to start with. This is um, the first color I'm going to use. By the way, is is um, ultramarine blue with a bit of Japanese red. There's some white there but uh, I'll try and keep it the red and the blue at the moment. Um, and I don't know whether you can tell but this is, it is very difficult to move. Notice it's not dripping. There's a lot of paint on this brush but no drips. Um, and in fact if I just turn my palette maybe you can see that it's hardly moving. There's nothing. In fact, there's no movement at all. It's very, very. Um, it's like painting with honey, I guess. Now, um, I'm going to be quite brutal with what I do here, uh, so don't be alarmed. Okay. You're among friends. So first thing I'm going to do is raise up the horizon. You see, I can push the paint and it. It hardly goes anywhere. See, it's broken up by the time I get to there. It's actually quite interesting. I quite like it. I'm surprised I've left it for so long. Um, and in fact, from my memory, when I used it at college, um, I was criticised for taking too long over a painting um, because it was so. It just slows you down. It's not the sort of thing you can swipe across really quickly and get uh, quick results. However, um, having said that, I'm going to try and get this done, hopefully, uh, in an hour or less, if I can. And um, let's just see where it goes. As you probably know by now, I don't go in for detail. It's all um, what I call the illusion of detail. And uh, I'm really like, I like this. This is so gloopy. It is literally like painting with food. So there we go, nice and sort of, I want it vague, you know. You know that that look. This is this is this would actually be very good for um, people who are struggling with perspective. This will make perspective for you. I may even come up a little higher. I think that wouldn't be a bad thing, and I'm going to introduce a little bit of white to it as well. just so that um, I know people ask me questions. Um, quite a lot of questions. Some of the questions are, are um, 
repeated time and time again, so I'm going to answer them before I get them. Um, this is oil paint. I don't do acrylics. You could paint a picture like this with acrylics, but it would be a different technique because of the way that uh, the paint dries. So hopefully that answers that question. Um, I'm painting on plywood. It's five millimetres thick. And I'll put the measurement on the screen in inches for the Americans out there, whom I know, are, in fact, there are more Americans watching this than, uh, than any other country, according to my statistics. In fact, uh, I found it quite interesting. Um, the Americans outnumber the Brits. There are some Brits watching, but in the list of top countries, it's America first. Then the Brits, then I think it moves off to places like... Um, in fact, maybe I'll check that. I think it's uh, possibly Spain. And um, I've got a lot of people in Brazil watching as well, which is quite nice. It's nice to know that um, people from around the world are keeping an eye on me. So um, I, this is um, obviously what I'm doing is just just playing with blues, really. And it's all ultramarine and white. That's all, nothing else. I'll be doing some other things uh, later, but I just want to get the feeling down of something. And then uh, I'll be on the sky in a moment. And I'm going, I'm doing this. Uh, first of all, I got this light area. I'll be adding an, another light area there in a moment. And then I'm going to build up to the sky. I'm going to lose some of this, some of this, well, quite a lot of this darkness. I want it more, I don't know, ethereal, possibly. See how it goes, and uh, I'll do some sort of non details in there as well. Just have a little think as I go here. Let's just see, do we need a, a bit of a, a bit of a hill in the distance there, maybe? What I what I like, well, no, what I hope to do with these videos is convince people that um, painting isn't isn't difficult. It's um, confidence, I suppose. Confidence is one of the main things that you need. Um, yeah, but anyway, back to what people ask me. So, yeah, um, in fact, some people say, how do you make it look easy? And that, the answer to that one is confidence. And I've done it quite a few times over the years. Um, yeah, five millimetre plywood. Ah, this is, now this, this is interesting. People say, oh, I do what you say, I put gesso on it and it bends. Um, possibly uh, it, it's drying too quickly, maybe it needs to be somewhere where it's just got a, you know, a room that isn't too hot. Whatever you do, don't put it near a source of heat to try and speed it up, that will make it bend. Even if it does bend, if it's a reasonable quality of wood, it will usually flatten out. All of mine are flat. This one's completely flat now. And I've got a few lying around here to prove my point. I don't think I've got any bent ones, but there is a particular type of plywood, and I think it's pine, which would bend. It's quite cheap. Um, this is made from, I think this is made from beech, this one. I know that the name on the back is Okumi, uh, which I'm going to have to check that and look it up. Um, and I'm in France, so uh, that's, um, that's where I buy my wood. The brushes I use, as usual, dead cheap. Um, no maker's name, that's how cheap it is. Uh, probably cost me about uh, three euros couple of dollars it's all. and uh, it's all you need for this sort of this well at least this stage of a painting you might need a better brush depends on your level of skill I suppose but um, there are certain brushes which are indispensable 
like thin brushes for doing distant very fine lines or even close up fine lines don't know why they need to be distant okay so I've got I've got a sort of uh, I've got some nice sort of rolling hills there but I want to bring a little bit more bright color where that area is using greens and I'm going to run some of the green into the blue as well but carefully uh, probably with a palette knife so that the paint has more chance of sitting on top of the blue rather than being pushed into it uh, by a brush. As I said up here I'm going to start introducing white and in fact to do that I'm going to need a lot more oil and I think I will need a new brush because this one's quite blue. Although, let's just see how far I can go. I think I'll just put some some paint in the sky ready because I'll, I'll want a few variations in the tone up here. Let's just get some light grey. Remember what I said about the um, about the paint? I can almost let go of this brush. This is, um, you know, with the stand oil. If you notice there, it's so uh, hanging on to the picture. That's how that's how gloopy it is. So goodbye, nice, interesting, streaky clouds. And let's see what we can do. Just something that's a bit different. I'm trying to make this a bit more saleable. I don't. I think some of my paintings. I mean, I sell enough of them. I, I'm not really in the business of selling. Funny. Now, this may sound completely stupid. I'm an artist and I'm a painter, but I'm not worried about whether I actually sell a painting. It's nice, nice every now and then, but um, I'm painting them t for teaching purposes, not for um, selling. So. Um, That makes life a little bit easier. I don't have to pack anything up and stick it in the post. However, though, don't let me dissuade you if you want one. Let me know. Here we go. This is just a little demo to show how slowly it comes out of the bottle. I mean, couldn't you just drink that? I have to say, though, don't do it. Linseed oil is... Um, is is actually an, an edible product because you know we can eat some um, we can eat linseed but I, I, maybe they do something to the processing which would uh, make it um, unpalatable it may even be really bad for you by the time it gets to this stage so certainly don't eat it um, but it just looks it just looks delicious right I'm gonna get some this is a it's turning into quite a nice grey this actually according to the light I've got. I'm painting this, by the way, under uh, one light, which is a, an LED bank of lights, which is sort of up that way. Um, I'm in France, and I have shutters on the window. And in fact, I think it's getting dark outside now anyway. Um, but the light that comes in the window plays havoc here. It comes in, it bounces off the floor below the painting, and then up onto the painting, which uh, causes lots of hot spots meaning bright spots. So there we are, it's just putting a, a bit of colour on just to see how it looks. Get the feel of it, because whatever I put on with this brush will not stay uh, as I put it on, it will change dramatically. So um, I'm going to sort of, um, I'm going to go and find a brush, so I might, you might hear some rummaging around sounds while I'm doing this. Just when I get a brush with less paint on it. Okay. I am ridiculously disorganized. Okay, so here's a nice big brush. Now this one isn't so cheap as the one I just showed you. This one is, um, well it's got a plastic handle. It's mostly bristle. There's a few bits of nylon in there, I think. In fact, I could be completely wrong. That could be all bristle. Very nice, nice feel to it, very springy. And um, what else can I tell you? There's nothing else I can tell you, really. It's got a barcode on it, which means nothing to me. So I'm going to get more oil. In fact, I think I'm probably going to get through quite a lot of this. The reason I... 
I, I bought this oil, I, I must have bought this about a year ago, is um, one of my students uh, who came here in 2019 gave me this. And this is lapis lazuli powder, powdered paint. And I, I thought, well, I'll try mixing my own paint. Okay. That amount of powder will make me enough to do three or four swipes. So I'll use this for smaller paintings, I think. Um, and I was going to use the stand oil to mix with it. And uh, I never got round to it. Not yet, anyway, but I will. So, um, OK, big brush. I'm going to put some white down the middle and slightly darker on the sides, I think. That should make it uh, quite interesting. And I'm also going to get some more white on a fresh palette because it's incredible how they fill up with paint. I can't, I can't use the standard palette because, um, like I just said, I use too much, I use, well, not too much, but I use so much paint the palette would be fill, filled uh, within seconds. And um, I like the plates because it keeps it contained. Let's see what happens to this. All right then. I'm going to have something bright down the middle. Another demo on the stickiness. See that? Quite interesting. I, I like the resistance it gives you. I do like to work quite fast, but I have to say, occasionally, being forced to pause is not a bad thing. What should we do here? Let's just. I think. I think we'll put a little bit out there. A little touch here. So, this costs, I think, about, um, could have been about 18 euros for this bottle. So, uh, as, as I said, it's not cheap, but I think when, when you consider um, the cost of materials on a painting, the amount of oil, even if I use that entire bottle on this one painting, um, when you, yes, if you say, well, that, that bottle of oil cost 18 euros, or that's, I don't know what that is in dollars, I have no idea. It's probably slightly more than 18. Um, maybe I'll put it on the screen in a minute. Um, and then you take the price of the board, so that was seven euros. And the other paints that I use, the average tube, one of these tubes, and I'm, I won't obviously use a whole tube. One of these costs seven euros. Uh, the brushes, as a, you know, dirt cheap. And you may think, well, that's, that's quite a lot of money. It's not really when you consider, once you get the hang of all this, and if you work at it, you'll get the hang. It's inevitable. All you've got to do is just persevere and don't give in. Um, and you sell the painting for, let's say, for instance, this painting went for $2,000. Uh, you may think, well, that's, that's a lot of money. Well, actually, it's possible. It's more than possible. Um, an English artist that I know, along with me, would sell a painting this size for about 2000 uh, pounds, which is uh, two and a half thousand dollars, somewhere up, something like that. Um, anything bigger, the, it almost doubles the price. There's no, and there's not really. Well, some people say there has to be a formula for how you charge. The formula that I use is gut instinct and uh, past experience, and knowing my worth. You have to know your worth. You can't be embarrassed about how much you're going to charge for a painting. And the reason being is 
There are several. One is that you may be able to do a painting like this in an hour. I mean, obviously I've painted on this before. And what I'm going to do now is going to take about an hour. So that's two hours, three. By the time I finished, it may be up to about five hours. And you may think, well, that's a lot of money for five hours. But it's the last 50 years that allows you to do it in that time. So you don't really need to justify how much you charge for a painting. And don't be embarrassed to ask. Um, if you think of it, there's a, there are lots of ways of thinking of uh, this sort of this subject. And one that's always got me is that if you go to uh, uh, an estate agent or a, uh, in America, I guess you call it a real a realtor, um, and they charge I don't know how much do they charge two percent, two and a half percent, something like that, um, and they they're making money for making a few photocopies, possibly, and spending a bit of time walking around the property, and they can make lots of money really quickly. Um, and consultants, any consultant that you go and see is um, charging for their experience. So don't be afraid to do the same. When you get to, to be good at this, uh, people are willing to pay. The thing about this, uh, also to consider, is when you've painted it, It'll last, if you look after it, and you hand it down through your family, uh, hundreds of years. So you're buying an heirloom as well. That's another, there's lots of ways of thinking of everything, really, isn't there? So back to the grey. I'll stop mumbling on here and just get on with the painting. Um, if this was normal oil, I think by now I would have gone a lot further than I've gone now. It is a struggle getting it to getting it to spread. It will spread, of course, and when it's when it's dry, any brush marks will be gone. And I'll show you a close up of that later, so that you can um, so you believe me. Okay, so it's an interesting sky coming out of this. A lot more simple than the type of sky I would normally do. And you know what? I'm, I'm psychic. I know there will be people saying, I much preferred it before you did that. That always happens. There's always someone who uh, prefers the other version of a painting before you change it. But that's OK. Each to their own. In fact, I put up a video on my Facebook page uh, about an hour ago. And it was a quickie. I did like this this morning. A small, much smaller painting, only about so big. And I changed the sky. And I just, uh, I did it because somebody said, um, talk less. And they obviously don't want me talking. So I thought, well, I'll do one. I did a speed it up video, which is something I don't do because mostly people don't like them. But they can be sort of entertaining, I think. But um, most people just aren't interested. All you do is get to see someone doing something so fast that you can't really follow it. So um, I thought, well, I'll put that up. And I said, um, you know, this is for the person who said I, I should talk less. And of course, my Facebook friends, have, um, my loyal Facebook friends, have jumped to my defence and said, <laughs> in no uncertain terms, Tell them to go away. We like you talking. So that's fine. I like that. I'm glad you like me talking. It's a very, a very well, painting's a pretty strange way to make a living, isn't it? But I'll tell you something that's even weirder, and that is standing in a room talking to yourself while you're, while you're painting and trying not to say the wrong thing. Sometimes the old motor mouth takes over. And I 
I put in opinions, <laughs> which I should probably keep to myself about certain matters, so I, I try not to do that now. Thank goodness for video editing software. I have no idea how long this has gone on for. Good thing about this camera I've got is that I um I can be videoing away and I've set it I've set it to record to a, a disc in the camera, a card, you know that sort of thing. Um, and when the when the camera has made a certain number of um, a file of a certain number of megabytes, it automatically stops and makes another file. So I get probably by the time I got to the end, I'll have maybe eight or ten. Um, uh, is it one point seven gigabyte files? It's the only problem with them making videos is the size of the files. They're really big which in turn makes it a long time to upload to YouTube. Sometimes I have to leave the camera going all night, uh, not the camera, I leave the computer going all night while it's uploading. And um, anyway, so yeah, I'm standing here talking to myself. What I'd rather do actually is, uh, I used to do this, is um, I would paint the picture in silence, just listening to really loud music. It doesn't matter what the music is, as long as it's not rap. And I would just um, put the word, put the speech in later. But this way, oh, and of course, when I finished the painting, I would think to myself, now what the heck am I going to say? I've got to talk now for an hour about what I was doing. So you have to sort of remember what you were doing at what point. And I, this is a much easier way of doing it. So I've got, I've got this microphone thing pinned on me somewhere. Can you see it? Down there. There it is. And uh, picking up my every utterance. OK. And uh, which means, which is good, I suppose, because then when I finish, all I've got to do is some um, sort of edit it out, edit it, <laughs> edit out bits like that, and also edit out um, any time that I cough or like my my phone beeped a little while back. I might cut that out. I might not. The problem, of course, is if it beeps some um, halfway through a sentence. Not so easy to cut it out if it does that. And uh, I don't need to beep out any expletives because I, I don't swear much anyway. Certainly not when I'm painting. Now this this sky is uh, a bit, you see all these textures here at the moment. Th these will all go because I'll be working on that with the big brush in a moment. Just want to fill that dark area over there. Um, and in fact, I'm going to put a bit more, a bit more blue in that area, and pull it into the grey just a little bit. Just check the blue on the screen. That looks nice. Yep. And anyway, what should we talk about now? What other questions do I get asked? Some people say, oh, here's one. Right, uh, this has happened in the last few days. I've had a, a bit of a spate of selling pictures lately. Um, someone said, where can I see the paintings that you have for sale? The, well, quite frankly, I'm quite a disorganized sort of person. Uh, the best thing to do, I do have a website, and the link will be in the box down there. Um, but if you go to my Facebook page, go into the pictures folder of my art page and have a look in there. If there's anything you like, put a comment on it saying, how much is this? And um, then we can discuss it. Okay, so 
So a bit of blue there, a bit patchy at the moment, doesn't matter though, there's a reason for it. And you might see here, this is beading, this effect here is called beading. This is where the original surface is repelling the oil. Now I can make that, I can make that paint um, go in, either with a palette knife, just by pushing it a little bit, like so, or I could use a brush. So I'm going to use a palette knife for now. It doesn't really matter. I mean, if, if you see something like that, it's not the end of the world. You can always um, you can always fix it later. But that that's there's one way of doing it. That just makes sure that the paint really uh, squished down onto the surface really hard. And once you've done it, it, it that's it. It won't it won't bead again. And um, that's that out the way. Um, how do I prepare my board? Well, I got a piece of plywood. I um, sand it with a sander with 120 grit. Um, just very, very, you know, I just use a hand sander and just go over it very lightly. And uh, once then I dust it off and then I um, put gesso on it. And gesso is an acrylic, um, an acrylic undercoat paint. Let me show you the gesso that I use. All the materials I use are made by Lefranc and Bourgeois. They don't pay me for this, uh, but that's gesso, and it's an acrylic paint. That's all it is. And uh, you just paint that on, let it dry. It takes about an hour to dry, I guess. And then it, the board will bend at that stage very slightly. Don't worry about it. Uh, just let it bend. And don't try and compensate for it. Don't try and sort of bend it the other way or anything like that. You could, uh, could be making more trouble for yourself by doing that. And um, when it's dry, put another coat of gesso on. And then when that's... Uh, sorry, you sand, sand the gesso. Then put another coat of gesso on top. And uh, leave that. And that will dry off. You do it three times with a light sanding between each coat of gesso, except for the last one, I don't bother. I just paint straight on top of that. And the reason I use board is because I want to dictate the marks that I make. I don't want the canvas to make the marks, you know, the canvas pattern in the paint. I'd rather, um, rather do that myself. Now, I, I, I gave you a bit of a a bum steer here. That beading is still coming back, and I, I will get rid of it. The, I, I've always found maybe it's just with normal oil, but with this oil, maybe it's a bit tougher. Another way to do it is just to use some paper, I guess, and just smear it in like so. Now the the oil is so uh, sticky. You've got to be careful that you don't start putting bits of paper everywhere. And the other thing I might say actually at the moment, I'm not worried about what these clouds look like because that does change dramatically when I start to use the big brush. A little bit more paper. I think ordinary oil, I know that you get a little bit of beading with it on a painting that hasn't been um, that, that, that has been left for a while. Uh, but ordinary oil, ordinary linseed oil just seems to uh, not bead. Or if it does, it's easy to fix. This obviously needs really pushing into the surface of the board a bit. So I'm not, I don't care about these swirly weird shapes that I've got here because as I said nothing is um nothing is going to stay the same everything's going to change in a moment and in fact it's going to be the bit I really like and that's when I get to use the big brush on it okay that's really interesting well I say that you may not be in the slightest bit interested in fact 
for all I know, you may have all gone to sleep. Are you feeling sleepy? Oh, I better not start that. You might all really fall fall asleep, and then I'll be standing here talking to myself. Okay, quick look in the camera. Good, right. Now then, another bit of a, a go with this. Just along there. Okay, there's a good feeling of distance through there. I, in fact, I might even blend it more. Um, the more you do blend the sky and the land together, the bigger the distance that you'll achieve. So, for instance, this dark bit here, that piece there, has a certain distance from us. This over here is also showing that that part and that part there is a there you can actually figure out how far away it is if that makes sense if i if i blend them a bit more through here i can make that less obvious and i can start to send it further back like that's what i'm going to do i want it really to be a bit of a mystery I'm going to keep that because I quite do. I like it. Uh, sort of like it. Kind of, sort of, but I'm not sure. Do I really like it that much? I don't know. I might just just knock it down a bit and leave the top, top edge, and then bring the bottom down here. Okay. Now starting to get even more distance. I'm going to be putting uh, light spots in here soon with a nice big light area hitting the ground down there but I think before I do that now I'm going to start working on the sky with the big brush. When I've been over it with a big brush I'll then be doing a few more I hesitate to say details because it won't be detailed, but a few more refinements and then a little bit more of the big brush as well. So it's um, quite repetitive. The, the, the one thing uh, I do want to say here is that for those of you who struggle with painting because you believe that you can't draw, you may have noticed I haven't drawn a thing here. There's no drawing. Um, sure some people say well you're drawing with paint well actually I'm not I'm just smearing paint around it's not just, there's no actual drawing in the in the real sense of the word okay a few bumps in the paint here from the uh, painting underneath but that doesn't matter I doubt that you can see them in fact I'm looking in my if you find it, they don't seem to show up. Okay, that's good. So now, time for this guy. The way I do it normally is I just paint with the flat side of the brush, as you might have seen if you've been watching my videos. Um, with this paint, I think I might have to use a bit more force because it is so sticky. So I'm just going to I'm going to sort of experiment. The reason I did the little painting I put on Facebook earlier was purely for um, oh, practice, I guess. Okay, so I'm going to start doing this, but not the way I would no normally. You see, I have this way of describing this as imagine you're stroking the wings of a butterfly. You're not with this. You are, you are actually giving a rhinoceros a good good scrape down with your brush. It's, you, you don't have to be too careful. And that's purely down to the um, oil, the viscosity of the oil. So let's 
uh, just carry on here see what we get doing this I'll tell you about my courses that I'm doing I um, I teach on Skype I'd like to teach on zoom but my camera for some reason just doesn't work on zoom I have no idea what's going on but till I figure it out I'll stay with Skype I do about not that it matters that much actually but it's I think I've it's 25 25 students per session I mean, it really doesn't make much difference to me because I don't, s I don't see anyone until the end of the lesson and then I answer questions. But um, So I, I just paint. They pay me a shed load of money. Ha, no, they don't. Um, all the details will be below in the box underneath. But uh, if you become a Patreon, if you go to my Patreon page, and if you, be you are a Patreon and you pay... Um, ten dollars. You sort of well, you, you don't actually get the lesson free, but you you get into the lesson for uh, just the ten dollars. If you're not a patron, it's uh, twenty-five euros or dollars. I can't remember. It's twenty-five. So if twenty-five whatevers. If you're a patron, you only pay ten ten whatevers, and uh, so you save money. And um, you get to ask me any questions you like at the end of it. Usually it lasts an hour and a half. And uh, I do the same as I'm doing here. I ramble on while I'm painting. Some people ask questions while I'm painting, which is fine. Because um, I can actually do two things at once. So uh, it's not a problem. Okay, so you can see, I hope, how easy it is to paint a sky of a certain type. This could, this could be any kind of sky, but I just wanted something with a sort of light blast down the middle. I don't know where the light's coming from, possibly up here somewhere off the, off the painting. Um, and it's hitting the land, uh, which is going to turn green down here. It's already dark green at the moment, but I'm going to be starting putting some colour on there as well. And um, yeah, I quite I quite like this quite like this effect. You can you can also pick up some of this paint and push it around a bit. You don't have to just smooth it. That's so quite um, quite interesting. And it and it's got a it's got a nice sheen to it as well, which I quite like. I have to say, I don't I don't like paintings that are just a matte finish. If you paint um, if you paint using turpentine as as your medium to dilute the paint, um, your picture will usually end up a bit blotchy because sometimes the oil will be on the surface, sometimes it will the turpentine will have knocked so much of the oil out of it you'll get uh, spots that are matte and with no reflection uh, which usually means that the best thing to do uh, when you've finished is to varnish the painting so it has a, a uniformity and I think I personally think that a painting with a, a gloss on it is far preferable to one that has no gloss uh, and of course turpentine is highly toxic it's not good for you and it stinks. Linseed oil doesn't actually smell. Some people have put off painting because they say, oh, it smells so bad, but actually it's, it doesn't. It's the turpentine that smells, not the linseed oil and the oil paint. So uh, there you go. Oh, ah, now another question. You're going to like this. I'm sure I've said this before on another video. People say, how do you clean your brushes? Well, okay. Let me just ask you this question. If you had a frying pan and you've just fried a load of food in it, so it's covered in oil, 
what are you going to clean it with? Are you going to clean it with turpentine or are you going to clean it with detergent? Now, personally, I've never cleaned a, a saucepan or a frying pan with turpentine. Um, detergent always seems to do the trick, doesn't it? Let's be, let's be blunt. So that's what I use to clean my brushes. I use detergent. It's just the stuff that you use in your washing machine. You can use the stuff you use for dishwashing, but it's not usually quite so strong. And um, so that hopefully answers that. Yeah, turpentine to clean a frying pan. I don't think so. So uh, how's that for a, a revelation? None of that having to go out and stand out in the cold or the hot weather cleaning your brushes because you don't like the smell just use detergent okay so that's that one and it, it works the same for your hands as well you get it on your hands well actually if you get oil paint on your hand there's some oil paint on my finger uh, you can get that off without using turps it just comes off same thing goes for dropping it on the floor I'm on a wooden floor here old French house nice wooden floor uh, if I drop some paint, just wipe it with a bit of paper. Don't put turps on it because you'll dilute the paint and it'll go into the wood further. The oil paint from straight from the tube, if you wipe it hard with a piece of paper, it just comes off. Do not add water. So, what else can we, what else can I tell you that will change your life? I've got some little lumps here. You probably can't see them, but there's a little nodule there, and it's just um, the oil that was around the rim of the bottle, it's been, because I've never opened it before. Um, you get like a crusty residue around the top of the bottle, which you may be able to see. There's some on the, on the side of the bottle, just there. Uh, you get that in your painting. Don't, don't panic about it. You can either just push it until it gets off the edge of the picture, like that, and that little bit is now off the painting. If there are any more, you can just flick them with a knife when it's dry. If there's a hair, which there is here, just touch it with the corner of your brush. And there's the hair. I hope you can see that against the blue. There you go. It's gone. And then you can just cover the mark that you made just by pushing the paint around a bit, like so. Okay. Apparently, um, stand oil dries quite quickly, and uh, not everybody wants to put a drying agent in their oil because it, they can uh, smell a little bit, um, and for some people they may cause a slightly allergic reaction. But the more the more practiced. Uh, you become uh, the more you won't care uh, if the paint dries fast it'll never dry as fast as acrylic of course and uh, I know that acrylic can paint painters can uh, add a retardant to keep their paint wet but um, yeah. I've never particularly been um, an acrylic painter never really wanted to don't know, it just doesn't have the appeal for me. Okay, so I'm going to put in a few little bumps and tones in there just to. I, I don't know, it's just to, um, just to sort of grab the eye a little bit. It's this illusion of detail thing that I'm sort of obsessed with, you know, where you can just add a few little marks like so. And um, it can become something. Who knows what it is? It's, um, it's just something. I'm a painter of somethings. And why not? Somebody's got to do it. Okay, so you, using that, uh, that idea in, in mind, you could just, uh, using a square ended brush like this, you could add a shape like that. Now, what could that be? Could that be a cliff over in the distance? 
would be in fact I quite like the idea that it is a, a cliff or like a line of an outcrop of some kind just be careful when you do this sort of thing not to overdo it just um, be a little bit selective in other words don't don't do it for the sake of doing it you've got to balance um, what you're doing with do you need to do it in the first place and um, of course I'm just demonstrating this I mean maybe I wouldn't have put this this much in normally but I think it, it doesn't hurt to just show you what can be done so suddenly you have this uh, landscape where everything's going into the background and things are starting to look interesting purely because you add a dot somewhere because the eye will figure out what that dot's going to be so working on that idea of little little shapes becoming some things I think it probably needs let's have a, something across there um, I'm going to start adding a few fields that will gently bring this foreground green into the blue I don't want it to be quite as sudden as you can see there um, although it probably would work but uh, in this case I'm going to um, show you other things that you can do so I'm going to use a palette knife and this stuff here which is has the mysterious name of light green um, and it's just uh, it's just light green really you could you could add I'm, in fact I'm going to I'm going to add a bit of white to it I'm going to put a little bit of white in there just to make it lighter green and um, I'll show you some of the effects that you can get now this this I'm going to keep really simple I don't want to overdo this painting I'm trying to keep it as quite a, a quite a, a, a simplistic sort of process here I've already got some light green on there which funnily enough is pretty well uh, the same tone that I've just mixed up maybe it's a bit darker so um, I'm just gonna make it a little bit lighter I'm not adding oil to this I could have I suppose but uh, uh, I don't see any reason why anyway so what I'm going to do is pull some of this into the blue just to get a feeling that um, of con continuity I suppose over into that blue area and in fact I'm just going to solidify that lump there so that we've got a bit more a bit more greenery on the ground I'm going to just adjust the camera for you and so you can see what's going on so that's a, a little bit closer and um, as I said I'm just trying to connect the green the dark there's a sort of dark line below there and I want to pull them together I don't want it to be like well almost two paintings I want, I want to pull the blue and the green together I'm repeating myself never mind um, so a little bit more over there just hope I'm not in the way at least I'm not now anyway okay let's um, let's now add a little something over here see how the green because I'm using the knife it sits on top of the wet blue and believe me that blue is wetter than wet can anything be wetter than wet I don't know this can anyway so what I want to do as much as possible is get it on there in one hit if I have to go over that again I'll lose that contrast and I really don't want to do that so I'm going to try and do a few other little things here I'm going to put uh, a line coming down there see how that looks something to lead you up into the into the mid distance this is all this is you know what this is this is almost abstract 
See, when I when I was a student, I was very embarrassed one day because I was in a. I've never been particularly interested in abstract, funnily enough, abstract landscape, as opposed to just landscape anything. You know, I'm not I'm not talking about blobs. I'm talking about uh, a, the the way to convey a landscape using abstract shapes, which is what I'm doing here. Uh, I was in a lesson, and it wasn't anything to do with painting. It was actually a straightforward graphic design lesson and to you younger people I have to say there wasn't a computer in the room it was all done by one of these first model hand that I ever had still going still works so no computers in fact um, we only just started using magic markers around about then if I'd been in the college I think uh, a year earlier, we would have still been using um, sticks of Comte, which is compressed charcoal, to make up sketches for things that we were designing, like, you know, adverts, that sort of stuff, whatever, whatever we were working on. Um, and the, the teacher, whose name was um, Bob Miller, he's not around anymore, obviously, you know, it's a few years ago, and he was, he was getting on then. Um, and he, want, he wanted us to just make abstract shapes on a piece of paper using squares, triangles, rectangles, that sort of stuff, and circles. And I just sat there and I thought, well, that's, good. that's easy enough. What we wanted to see was balance, how you balance shapes. So if you had a triangle here, it had to equal visually the size of a circle there or, you know, whatever. It's just all about balance and composition. Anyway, unfortunately, he held up my little scribble that I'd done as an example to everyone on how to do the task in hand. And that's the last thing I wanted. I did not want uh, to be the centre of attention. I spent most of my time in college keeping my head down, trying to get on with my work. But anyway, he, he did this, and um, that was that. Uh, I was just embarrassed, really. Mind you, I used to, if a, if a sparrow came and ate some food on the lawn in front of me and glanced at me, I would blush. That's how shy I was. Anyway, got over it now, as you can probably tell. So, yeah, balance. Balance in a picture. The other thing I learned, I have learned over the years, is that when you're painting something like this, you don't have to think of what these components actually are. So long as they look as though they should be there and, and make the viewer think there's something going on, then you've achieved your goal. There was a, an English actor quite a few years ago um, called Wilfred Hyde White and he went to um, he was in a lot of films uh, some people may remember him but he said uh, that there was one thing one of the interesting things or important things he'd learned in life is that um, yes he learned he learned that first of all he couldn't act and the second thing he learned was it didn't matter, which I think is quite an interesting outlook on life. So maybe that can be used in painting in as much as it doesn't matter what I put down here, so long as it looks like something. And if you just remember not to overdo it, just get away with the necessities, uh, you can actually achieve quite a lot. Go far enough. I think that probably applies to a lot of things in life. You don't have to go too far. Learn, learn, the, um, learn as much as you can so that you can filter out what you don't need to use. Some things that I put on the painting, which you may not see there, is a very, very fine line 
um, which you would see on the painting, whether you'd see it on the video, I'm not sure, but it just looks as though it should be there. It looks as though it's actually doing something. So we've got a little bit of this blue, um, blue, this green in the foreground here. Um, I'm, I'm thinking that I might experiment with a little bit of. Let me see. Do I want? Do I want red ochre, or do I want yellow ochre? I'm tempted to just stick to red ochre, just a touch. Really don't want to overdo it. So I've got some on a palette over the other side of the room. Here we go. And um, it's it's not a lot at all. I'm just going to use a tiny amount, a little bit on my palette knife there. Um, and I think I'll zoom in so you can see what I'm going to do. Otherwise, it's a little bit of a waste of time if you can't see what's going on. Okay, I'm just going to put a little bit in the foreground here. Just literally putting a like a stain on the ground. Really try and keep out of the way here. Just try it from the side. bright red there which is what I want because I've had another change of mind <laughs> um, I'll, I'll say something about painting is uh, making it up as you go along it also teaches you that when you're doing the voice for a video like this you have to make that up as you go along and I was gonna I was thinking of using yellow ochre uh, so I'm going to I'm gonna put some on the red which will mute it slightly I just want to add a little bit of colour across the bottom there without overdoing it. Now you may think, silly old fool's overdone it a bit. But, um, I'm going to fix that using the magic tool, which is called this stuff. Paper towel. I'm going to mute it, and the way I'm going to mute it is just by dragging through it, like so, and then finding a clean bit of paper, and dragging again, until I get the colour that I want, which is neither of those, so I'm going to um, experiment. So I'm going to put some um, little bit of stand oil on this paper here, and I'm going to drag it through this to loosen it up a bit, push it around, give it a hard time for allowing me. Oh, actually, now now I think about that, I'm quite liking it. So I'm going to work on that a little bit more and um, I'm going to try and speed up a little bit because I suffer from um, food allergies and I've clearly eaten something and I'm having a reaction. I don't know whether you can see it on my hands but uh, if I just stretch my hand out like that you can see I've got red marks appearing on my hands and it, it, makes, it, it makes my hands feel as though... Um, you might be able to see more on that one, I think. It makes it feel, your hands feel as though they're on fire, but I've started this, so I really want to finish it. And um, I'm sort of used to it now. It's sort of, I'll take an antihistamine, and hopefully it'll go away. I'm actually allergic to um, pretty well, well, at the moment it feels like everything, but certainly dairy products. And um, soy, soy is 
quite deadly. Some soy sauce put me in hospital uh, a couple of years ago now. Uh, I get anaphylaxis if I am. If I have soy. And a lot of people apparently are allergic to soy, which makes me wonder why the heck they put it in food. I guess it's all down to money, anyway. Right, so I'm putting, putting green into that. Um, to, to mute it down, and I quite like, I like what's happening there. The reason I like it is because, um, I, I often say this, but black and red are the same colour wavelength and they hit the eye quickly. Um, the red in the brown brings it really into the foreground. The, the dark green is borderline black in a few places there. So that all this dark stuff brings the foreground into the foreground and the blues take everything else into the background. So you get uh, your perspective quite, um, quite easily actually. Right, I'm just adding a little bit of white to the green here, just to put a little bit more down the bottom there, as carefully as I can without obscuring it. Let's try it from the side here. Just a little bit in there. In all my art career, I, I barely used palette knives I've, uh, since I've been in France, which is uh, 20 years now. No, I beg your pardon. Yeah, it's actually 20 years, I think. Um, and I've been painting here. I've used, I've used my palette knife more. And I've been, I've been painting since um, 1969. So. I was always a brush person. There we go. I wonder about that. Do I actually like it? I think, do you know, I'm actually going to put a little bit more brown back on that. Just here. I know places like, uh, some places in Africa and Australia have very, very red soil. So who's to say where this is? It could be anywhere. I mean, it's in my mind somewhere. I have to say, it can be quite a strange and murky place. So, um, let's see what else we can do. I think, I quite like that sort of dark bit coming in there. Do I like it enough to leave it alone? I don't think I do. I think I just put a little bit of something on it, like that. And down here, I think, a line going that way. Just a hint of something. And then I think that's pretty well it. Right down the bottom there, where you can't reach because of the shape of the easel. I'll probably fill that in in a minute with just a bit of uh, a piece of paper. And. Um, Going to take my antihistamine. It is a bit boring having these food allergies. It seems to be everything I like has a, I have a reaction, but um, at least uh, I'm not as bad off as some people. Right, I'm just breaking up some of those bits in there. Just to, that's better. Yeah, I think I quite like that. So I'm going to stop now because this has um, gone on quite a long time. So I'll just back up on the camera, give you a full view of it, and then um, then I think we'll be done. So there we are. However, I just want to do a couple of things um, with a bit of blue. I'm not totally happy with that um, with that sky. I think it needs just needs a few little um, a little bits of a few little bits of blue, just sort of here. I'm, I'm going to go over it again with the, the big um, 
brush in a moment. But I think just something in there that wasn't resting easily, if you know what I mean. There was something about the bulge in that, uh, that bit of cloud there. And I'm going to break it on that side as well, just a bit, because I just didn't like it. Sometimes um, I can't explain what it is I like about a painting and what it is I don't like, other than it's just I don't like it. Keeps it simple, doesn't it? So I'm, I'm just going to do a little bit of pushing some blue just here. I don't want this and this to be a line across the painting, and they won't be. Uh, in a minute. There, I think that might be that might be as far as I'm going to go today. Anyway, who knows what I'll do tomorrow? Uh, so, big brush time. Bit of a wipe just to get any surplus paint off. Not that there is much. It's just a bit oily. Okay, and then I'm just going to do this a few times, just sort of push it around, smooth it out. So that may be almost it. Right, so before I go, I'd just like to say thank you as usual. It's very nice of you to be here. Hope you hang, hung around. And if not, um, you won't hear me saying this, of course. But I think there we are. That's probably it now. I have to. There comes a point in a painting when I have to stop fiddling. Um, one, one of the things I try to teach people is when to stop and when to step back and just sort of say, well, that's enough. Um, and I think we're pretty well there on this one. Uh, at least for this, for now anyway, but um, I tend to see paintings as, a, as an ongoing thing. They're never really completely finished. There's always something. But uh, usually I keep going until I'm so bored I just walk away. I know people are going to say they can see a face in the sky, and I can see it now, and they've it's almost like a giant clown. There's an eye there, and there's an eye here. There's the nose. I mean, I'm going to have to lose that because I'll be inundated with people saying they see this face. And um, I don't intend to paint things in the sky. Usually, the thing that people spot are giant pigs and um, dragons. Dragons pop up quite a lot. So, uh, of course, they're not really there. There we are. I think if there is anything there now, you'll just have to see it. Maybe I'll adjust it another time. But that's it for now. I'm really going to stop. Thanks for being here. Hope you've learned something. And um, uh, as I said earlier about lessons, if you want to come to uh, a Skype lesson, you'll find all the info below. And um, that goes on for an hour and a half, hour of painting roughly half an hour of uh, questions and answers and you can ask me anything you like and uh, I'll see you in the next video take care bye for now